How's everyone doing? Karen here with this week's topic. It's on gender neutral pronouns. Now, what we're talking about here are the ones that are kind of coming around like Z, N, E, V, Zier, other stuff like that. I got kind of clued into it a few years ago when I was in a linguistic anthropology course. So the fact that the professor knew something about that was kind of interesting and it is what originally like made me go like, hey, what's this? What's that? You know? So when it became the topic this week, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that stuff. And it's very interesting because, you know, a lot of things that are known about gender and sex are wrong. First off, people think that they tend to think that it's just a binary, like you're either male or female. You're either, you know, a boy or a girl. And they go, well, you know, if you're born with, you know, twig and berries, you're a boy. If you're not, you're a girl. And even that is wrong, because we're talking about 46XY, 46XX. We're not, you know, we're not even taking into account 47XXY or 45X, you know, like Turner Syndrome or Kleinfelter Syndrome or anything like that. We're only talking about the gen, you know, boy and girl, and that's not even right. That's not even true. That's not even accurate. So why do we have a binary when it comes to gender pronouns? You know, him, her, his, hers, he, she, stuff like that. Like, why do we only have those two? We know that gender is a big spectrum where, you know, if you put absolute masculinity on one side and absolute femininity on one side, nobody actually fits those because across the board, there really is no actual definition of go to foreign cultures and you'll see that well they don't even follow what we follow you look at the fact that within the last century blue was a girl's color and pink was a boy's color so this idea that you know we have these hard fast rules on gender and gender identity and you are either a he or a she that is so wrong and not only is it so wrong it, it's just like, how can you even remotely say that gender is fluid, so we should have language that represents it? Another interesting thing is this. Language evolves. Language changes over time. If you look at the progression of slang throughout the history, we're not saying the same stuff they said in the 1920s. We're not saying the same stuff they are saying, you know, even the 1970s. Stuff that was, you know, words that were cool. When I was a kid, when I was a teenager, nowadays people look at you like, what the hell are you saying? Language evolves. The way that we talk, the way that we use that language changes over time. And it's fluid. So here's the thing about it all. We're bringing in these new words to give this new idea, to give this whole new perception of something. Let's do it. Let's talk about those. Let's have that conversation and bring them in. Now here's the funny part about it all. I don't use the new, I don't use the gender neutral pronouns. I don't really see myself going for them. Oh, let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. Press that like, favorite, subscribe, share everywhere, everywhere with everyone. Till next time. Bye. This week's topic of why we're advocates and just advocacy in general. I really didn't choose to, to work on behalf of, you know, trans anything. The reality is, I think it's something we should all be a part of. You know, the less we speak up, the more it is, the more capable others are of keeping us quiet.